Hey guys, welcome back to Horse Tooth Cinema. Today I'm going to be reviewing Elvis, uh, which came out this year and is uh, directed by Baz Luhrmann. This tells the story of the life of the one and only Elvis Presley, from his early years discovering his love for music to his early death. It's told through the point of view of Colonel Tom Parker, who was Elvis's manager, and is often accused of having inadvertently driven Elvis into an early grave. So as I mentioned, it's directed by Baz Luhrmann, who's someone that I'm not really a big fan of. I do think his Romeo and Juliet is okay. It's not a great movie or anything, but I'm not really a huge fan of the Shakespeare play anyway. So um, I, I really enjoy just seeing Baz have fun with it. Uh, I mean, you know, Juliet's holding a gun by the end. What more could you want? But other than that, I've never really found anything from him to like. Um, and in particular, the thing I have a real problem with is his uh, adaptation of The Great Gatsby, uh, his, the 2013 version. I do think it has some moments that are pretty great, but I don't really think it captures the spirit of the book at all. Um, you know, it, I obviously, like everybody, I read the book in high school, and then I've listened to it on audiobook a few times, and I really, really like it. And that book, you know, it's ultimately about like how the American dream is a total illusion, and it's really, you know, that what it's it's a cover-up for a lot of really grotesque stuff and I just don't think Baz Luhrmann captured that very well with his very sparkly and exuberant uh, adaptation. You only really get that 20s flair without any of the underlying darkness behind it. Some people might say well what about his Valley of Ashes in that film and I don't know to me especially the way it was done it's very digital looking and it just kind of looked glossy. Um, not like how I'd want the Valley of Ashes to look. So this wasn't exactly a movie that was like high on my radar or anything. Um, and I went into it, you know, with an open mind as I always do, even for filmmakers that I'm not a big fan of. Um, and surprisingly, I was a little bit more torn on Baz Luhrmann's like sparkly indulgences than I usually am. I, I didn't hate it at all. And, and I'll get into it. I'm, I'm kind of torn on this movie, but I'll... I'll get into it. I mean, like The Great Gatsby, I do think that the tragedy of Elvis is somewhat lost in the, you know, the, all his crazy, you know, indulgent glitz and glamour stuff, but I didn't mind it as much here. And I think part of that is just the, the fact that it's a musical biopic and I'm just comparing it to other musical biopics that I've seen in the past, which have taken a much more bland approach to the subject. I'm thinking of something like Walk the Line, or certainly something like Bohemian Rhapsody, which came out a few years ago. You know, Bohemian Rhapsody was this, like, PG-13 uh, movie um, where R Rami Malek said Freddie fucking Mercury once. Um, you know, and he's trying to portray a character that literally was one of the most vulgar musicians ever, and he, like, told the audience at several of his shows to like fuck off. It just didn't really capture this wild, ostentatious energy that was Freddie Mercury. I just kind of felt like the movie only really cared about the historical Freddie Mercury, uh, the one that we're uh, familiar with from his music and from reading about him, as opposed to who was the man himself. And I have to say, I don't think Elvis has that problem. As I mean, it certainly doesn't have the, you know, bland approach. Um, and I think it is slightly more concerned with Elvis as a person than Bohemian Rhapsody was. So let's talk about the Baz Luhrmann of it all. There's a lot of crazy camera movement and transitions in this film. And they were, of course, really cool to watch, as Baz Luhrmann always is. I mean, I think oftentimes, you know, even The Great Gatsby, it's... It's, it's beautiful to look at. It, you just have to forget what it's doing to the source material. So yeah, they were great to watch, and there were sections of it where I kind of thought that Baz was like flirting with being psychedelic. It's like he saw Enter the Void and went like, okay, how do I make this my thing? There's like a scene where the where a Ferris wheel like turns into an eyeball, the guitar will start spinning, and that'll transition into a concert with crazy lights and everything. And so I, I kind of commend him for that. I it, it definitely feels more like again, like, audacious than musical biopics, and probably even more than any of Baz Luhrmann's previous films. Um, it is missing a little bit of darkness that psychedelic movies have, even the ones that are, like, for kids. You look at something like Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, which, you know, is a kid's movie, but it also has that one, like, really psychedelic sequence on the boat, uh, which, you know, of course has the lighting and everything that you expect from psychedelic movies, but it also has, like, the, the bugs crawling on people's faces, which is a really grotesque image. And, uh, yeah, I think Baz, like, he's got the flair, he's just missing a little bit of the darkness, like he always kind of does with his, with his imagery. And I definitely would have liked to see that change as the film goes on. Maybe it starts out more in the way it did, but then it gets, you know, gradually a lot more twisted with the way it's using these psychedelic motions. But what, it, but what actually happens is that as the drama gets more serious, it just kind of fizzles out and becomes more of a standard biopic, which, 
is a little disappointing. One other uh, thing that I'm not a big fan of about Baz Luhrmann is that he often, he'll make period pieces, but then he'll put like really modern music in it. So I don't like that um, for, you know, obvious reasons that it's not really true to the period. I do think it can be done well, and I'll get into that in a second. Um, but yeah, in the way he's done it, I've just never been a big fan. However, the way it's used in, in Elvis, I didn't mind it quite as much as I did in The Great Gatsby, because when they're on Beale Street, for example, in Memphis, um, they're trying to tell the story of Elvis's uh, relationship with the black community, uh, which is something that I didn't know much about and uh, that I'm really glad to see it portrayed on film. Uh, so I think they're they're playing like uh, hip hop music, modern hip hop mu music, basically, which has more of a tie than hey, this is just upbeat and we want an upbeat song for this upbeat movie. When Baz used a bunch of Jay Z music in The Great Gatsby to like showcase the Roaring Twenties, I'm not a big fan of that because again, it just doesn't really have a lot of substance. It just seems like more, uh, you know, like we we want again we want to portray this sort of upbeat vibe, but we don't know how to do it through twenties music, so we're just going to use you know. Jay-Z music. In both examples though, both in Elvis and in The Great Gatsby, though I didn't mind it as much in Elvis, I do wish that they would pick some more obscure songs because if you use sort of, you know, modern upbeat music, but it's at least kind of obscure, it that that communicates to me that you're trying to just capture, you know, something about the time that is similar to today. Whereas if you just use a pop mu a pop song like they do in both The Great Gatsby and Elvis, it just seems more like you're pandering to the audience because, oh, they know this song. But again, it bothered me less here than in, than in The Great Gatsby. I thought it was used a little bit better. And I'd of course be remiss if I didn't mention Austin Butler, who plays Elvis here. Uh, this is one of the best performances of the year, for sure. I'm really glad that they cast somebody who is uh, not super well known. The only thing I'd ever seen Austin Butler in before is as a, a very minor character in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And to the extent that the character of Elvis exists in the script, as I'll get into, Austin Butler really does become Elvis. Like, especially when you watch him, uh, you know, perform, he he, feel, he felt like Elvis to me, as opposed to, you know, somebody putting on an Elvis costume. So yeah, because the Baz Luhrmann issues were a little bit muted compared to what they usually are for me, and Austin Butler's performance, I was kind of enjoying myself for the first hour. And then the movie ran into the biopic problem. For me, uh, biopics, whether they're musical or, or whatever, are, just, are one of my least favorite uh, subgenres because of how formulaic and shallow they usually are. Musical biopics usually have a formula like this. The character has really humble beginnings and they start to fall in love with music and they uh, make it rich and they uh, make it to stardom basically. But eventually, you know, they, they get too big and of course they start doing drugs and neglecting their family, which ultimately leads to their downfall. Um, you've seen this a thousand times, I guarantee it. There's nothing really interesting about the formula. It's it's something that we just kind of have been accustomed to the idea that this this happens to uh, famous people, especially rock stars, and it rarely leads us into insight as to the per as to who the person actually was. Not to say that I didn't learn anything about Elvis. I mean, um, as I kind of alluded to earlier, uh, what I really liked was the learning about the controversy surrounding his uh, wild hip movements. Um, so basically, I always thought that that people didn't like that, like conservatives didn't like um, Elvis's hip movements because it looked too sexual or something in the 1950s. But what it actually was is that he learned a lot of these moves from uh, spending the time in the black community, and that's and 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 they and the movements were sort of seen as too black, and people started to protest Elvis and uh, try to get his you know events canceled and stuff because of racist points of view about the way he was moving. So that was really interesting, and I you know I'm glad that they included that because yeah it's. It's something that I think just an average uh, person who like knows who Elvis is, but maybe doesn't know that much about his life. Yeah, I don't think they would have known that. But the thing is, I could have probably learned that from watching a documentary about Elvis. The insight that I actually want from a musical biopic, you know, it's this drama that's supposed to sweep you up into his life. I, I want some real insight about his life, who he really was as a person, what he thought. And I think they're just relying too heavily on the really generic biopic formula and I don't feel like I got anything out of it uh, other than, again, what's generally portrayed. And I think part of that is, you know, it's just the formula itself. And, and especially like when you're trying to condense an entire life to uh, even a really long movie like this, it's almost three hours. Uh, it's it's really difficult. It's you, you can't really capture the essence of a person um, that 
in that amount of time, or at least it's really rare. Related to my argument here about musical biopics, I recommend that you guys watch what's for me my favorite musical biopic, which is Walk Hard, The Dewey Cox Story. Uh, if you don't know, it, it's a fictional story. Dewey Cox was not a real person. So it's a comedy that's basically trying to recreate this musical biopic formula, and there's a lot of direct jabs at it that are just hysterical if you've seen a good number of these uh, historical musical biopic films. And it's fantastic. It's one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. And it really kind of proved to me that the best way to make a, bu a musical biopic is to just point and laugh at the formula itself. Um, I actually think that you could make a film similar to Walk Hard, but just with a real person. Uh, preferably if they're alive, because obviously there's the element of exploitation if you do it when they're after they've passed away. But yeah, I know I just I just would like to see um, somebody approach a musical biopic or just a biopic in general with a more comedic point of view to make it more interesting. Because as flashy as Elvis is. It's it's kind of shallow and generic in terms of like what it's actually doing. Uh, lastly, I have to mention that it didn't really help the experience that Tom Hanks gave one of the worst performances of the year. I don't know what the fuck he was thinking in this movie. He was so bad that he almost overshadowed how good Austin Butler was. I don't know what that accent was, but it's somewhere between Alabama and Russia. Like it's it's some weird combination of that that should not exist. Please stop. He definitely took some cues from Jared Leto in this performance. So I'm gonna give Elvis two and a half stars. I did like it a little more than some other Baz Luhrmann films I've seen, and I liked it more than some musical biopics I've seen, but I also don't, I think that it, this notion that it's some kind of, you know, revolutionary, uh, it's changing the way that musical biopics are, are uh, gonna be made, I just, I don't see it that way. I think I think you're better off watching Walk Hard again. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you like this video, you can like it down below and subscribe to the channel. Got more content coming out soon, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.